there's sometimes that God starts to build something inside you. And, you know, your area of service doesn't begin when you recognize it. Your area of service begins when God plants it inside you. And that's our responsibility to grow it, develop it, nurture it. Your realm of influence is powerful. You travel in circles we don't travel in. And someone needs what you have. And so God has opened some doors of opportunity for us. And we're going to uh, step through this big gate. And I wish it was smaller. I wish it was like strategic. Turn right, two blocks down, left. And, you know, I love it when God does that. You know, when he just gives you specific directions. Isn't that great? But then sometimes it's like, okay, here. And God says, if you don't step through the door this big, you won't step through the door when it's this big. And I thought, okay. So our journey is not complete. we got some more stuff to do for the kingdom of God. That's the team we're all on, is the kingdom of God. Nothing else makes sense unless we realize that's the spot. That's where we're supposed to be. So a lot of the emotions are out of the way for the first service. I, man, you first service people I had to put up with all that. Uh, let's go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, yes, the word, the word, the word. That's what it's so much all about. <clears throat> and what I want to share with you this morning is something that we re- I realized as I was, uh, this verse in, in verse 14 has meant so much to me over the last uh, month or so. And uh, we're going to start, let's, let's just back up. I mean, the whole chapter is great, but you know what? Um, you've been cooped up a long time and you probably don't want to hear, you know, all that hour worth of stuff, but... Verse 12, is, I like to start with verse 12, and we'll just, we'll take this as God gives us to us here. Uh, in, in verse 12, it says, and this is Paul speaking, he says, not that I have already obtained it or have already uh, become perfect. That word perfect means mature. How many knows there's people around you who know that you're mature or not? Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, you may think, we're, you think you're mature until you get around some people and they're going, man, he don't have it all together. And uh, you need friends who'll tell you that, right? No, okay, no amen there. But I, I, Paul says this, he uses a powerful word here. He says, I press on in order that I may lay a hold of that for which I have been laid a hold of by Christ Jesus. So he uses this, this phrase, pressing on. And when you and I got saved, uh, that, that really trans, you know, transferred my responsibility and ownership of my life to, to God. We've been bought with a price. We're not our own. We don't belong to ourselves anymore. And Jesus prayed the the classic prayer, Father, not my will, but your will be done. And when you pray that and say, Father, not my will, but your will be done, he may take you up on that. Okay? He just might just do it. I mean, when when you pray prayers like, God, I want more. Wow. And that's one of the reasons why we came here all these years ago was because we wanted more. Simply, we wanted more. And we knew that we were going to North City and our families and people said, North City? What's it, North City? I said, well, that's where we're supposed to go. So this idea, we want more. And when we begin to lay a hold of that thing that God laid a hold of us for, then we begin to step into purpose and destiny. Because I now am grabbing a hold of that thing he got a hold of me for. Which, that settles me, that, that fact that, God, you had something for me to do. I didn't know that. I didn't know this journey was going to come this way, but you did. And so by hanging on to him and that drive towards that, you begin to go towards God, what God destined you to go do. Makes sense, doesn't it? It's a pretty good progression here if you understand how this thing's going. Now in verse 14, again we see, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. So we get this word again about this pressing on. And the reason why there's, there's a pressing on is because there's pressure. I wish it wasn't so. I wish it wasn't so pressurized sometimes. But it gets pressurized sometimes because we're flowing against everything that seems to be going against us. We want our marriages right. We want our kids to come into the kingdom. We want so many things to happen. But there's a pressing that has to happen. I wish it was easier. I do sometimes. It's just that we have to keep moving and realize there's going to be resistance till we get out of here. You know, it's naive to think that we can get saved and born again and start moving in the kingdom of God and think there's not going to be anything happen. That's, 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 and when I got saved, back then it was, you know, if, there's, if there was something come against you, then you were in sin and you were... No, there's resistance. The enemy wouldn't be doing his job if he didn't resist. 
Is that not true? So last week we were talking about in the services, there was several words come forward. They were talking about Goliath and, and shutting the mouth of Goliath. And um, I hate, a, I don't like, a, I shouldn't say hate. I don't like a bully. Okay? I don't like a bully. I don't like to be bullied, right? But the enemy will bully you. He'll talk stuff to you. For 40 days, twice a day, Goliath steps out in front of Israel and tells them what they're not. You understand what I'm talking about? I don't like to be bullied. But there's no reason for him to shut up until someone shuts him up. You understand what I'm talking about? So if you move towards your destiny, if you move towards your purpose, toward what God's called for you to do, there's going to be this, all this stuff of what you're not. You're not loved. You're not forgiven. You're not appreciated. You're rejected. And show you all of what you're not. God tells us who we are. But the enemy will tell you what you're not. You're never going to measure up when you, know, when you listen to his voices. And listen to him to tell you your past is too bad. You're too this. You're too that. God has said in his word, I'm a son of God. Now who are you going to believe, right? Okay. But we entertain that stuff and we listen to the enemy tell us what we're not. Now, that was a key phrase I kept hearing last week was, was this shutting up the mouths of the lions and shutting up. And I went to Joshua chapter 6 and verse 1 and, and uh, I, I remember it so well because it was a Carmen song. You know, it said is, <laughs> Jericho was tightly shut up because of the armies of Israel or sons of Israel. And it says that none went out and none came in. And in verse 2, God says to, Moses, or to Joshua, he says, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho, the king and the mighty men of valor. And so we were talking about this shutting up thing and this idea of, of, wow, this is good stuff. I've read those verses before, but then I realized it's really hard to see what's been given when all that stuff is going on right here. And just because the sons of Israel had positioned themselves outside of Jericho where God had led them, now the activities of Jericho had shut down. Now there wasn't the activity going in and out of the city. They had closed ranks, they shut the doors, and they had become a stronghold. But because the sons of Israel had showed up in the position where they were supposed to be, they shut all that down. I begin to see a picture of our mind with all this activity going on where we're thinking about this and we're thinking about that. We're listening to so much drama and chaos that's going on up here. So I can't see what's being given to me because I got all this activity going on. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Lay down at night and this thing doesn't shut down. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, your body, you're physically tired, but mentally, we're still running some races. We're chasing rabbits. We're still, and we can't seem to hit the off switch right here. I know what I'm talking about. Okay? <laughs> I've chased more rabbits than you can. Yeah, nobody can reason stuff some more, more than I can, I don't think. And so this becomes our wearisome battleground right here. And we're so sometimes just like shut down because we can't think about another thing. Somebody will try to tell you something and you think, if you put one more piece of information here, we're going to kick this out. You know, and you understand what I'm talking about? It's just, it's crowded in here. You hear voices. You understand? I do. I hear them. I hear that you're not adequate. You're not good enough. You've not prepared enough. You've not done this enough. You've not done that enough. I hear that stuff, whether you do or not. I hear it. And so it's going to continue till I take this word and I stand in my position of authority and say, you know what? No, no, no. No more. No more. And you know, have you ever told anybody to shut up? How many listen? You shut up. And they keep talking. I think Jane told me shut up one time. And I was like, no, no, don't tell me shut up. You know? And I mean, yeah, there's something in the authority when you say shut up. No longer. No more. That's it. The word of God says, and you take this word, and that's what you go to battle with. It's not just trying to think, well, it'll all work out in the end. No, because you'll travel that track again. If that's the answer to the problems as well, you know what? It'll work out. You know, it'll all be okay if it's God's will. Really? That's the weapons that's going to shut this down? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's when you take the word of God and you say, no, 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 no. Because I want to see what's been given. And I can't see it if all this activity is going on. Makes sense, doesn't it? So we want to be, have a, 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 a peace of mind, a peace of heart. We lay down at night. We want some sleep, 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 
Sweet sleep. Say that fast. Yeah. Quick, quick, quick. Okay. So the greatest resistance will come from the enemy. He will make sure that you don't believe God's word. If you look at the, from the time of the garden, the enemy has always resisted God's vision or God's plan. Always. And he's always worked against God's people to keep them from coming in or hanging on to what he's given. It's a simple strategy when you think about it. Okay? If I can get you to believe what you're not, I don't have to worry about what you'll become. You see? If I can get people to doubt just a little bit as to what all they have been given and the authority they have through the blood of Jesus and the word of God, these are our weapons. There's not another set out there to go get. This is it. This is how we fight. And if we don't do that, we're going to pay the penalty for it. We're going to pay the price for it. And we're going to be robbed of our peace and our joy. This pressing on is a powerful, powerful principle in the word of God. David was a man after God's heart. There's pursuit in the Bible. I will pursue you. We talk about these pursuits and going after God. The only thing I have to be careful of is that this pressing on becomes something I do myself. It's me doing it. I'm trying to fix the problems. I'm trying to fix the marriage. I'm trying to fix all this other stuff when it's really just about me being the conduit by which God can do that. We'll wear ourselves out with self-effort. We will. I'm trying. I'm doing this, God. You see me. I'm working at this. And we don't ever seem to get the joy and the satisfaction and the fulfillment because we are trying to do this and the fruit of the Spirit's not been being developed by which we just now begin to walk in it. There's an inner work that has to work from the inside out instead of me just trying to clean the outside, outside up. That takes patience. How many likes patience? Okay, I knew I... Now, how many... I mean, doesn't like patience. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I want it yesterday, right? We want it yesterday. God, don't you see we're pressing and don't you see we're working at this and we're striving and we want this now and it's even for a good cause. It's so my kids will come into the kingdom and so my marriage will be fixed and so my finances will be good. And those are all godly things. They're godly prizes. They're godly goals. But I can begin to do this and it will wear us out. Absolutely. Absolutely. It just doesn't work that way. So this idea of pressing on has to stay within the right mentality. And also it can even develop an individual mentality, meaning that it's me and God. I've seen people go through some horrendous times and they develop this mentality by which they're saying, hey, God and I did it. God and I did it. Sounds good. But there's people that we need. We're not an island. There's people you can call on. That's the strength of the body of the Christ, is the unity you find when you can't hold your hands up any longer, and you get that Aaron and her come along beside you and behind you and helped you focus and change it back to where it's supposed to be. That's the strength of the body of Christ. And sometimes in our culture, we get this idea that all I need is God. Sounds good. You know, and there's times you're not going to find anybody to encourage you, and you got to go it with you and God. I'm just being honest, okay? There's times when, you know, the only encouragement you get is through Siri on your phone. I mean, she's the only one talking nice to you. You know, Siri, can I get home? Yes, you can. Turn left. And, uh, you know, that's the only good voice you're hearing. You know, and there's times you got to just say, okay, you know what, God? Hey, it's you and I. I'm not going to be, you know, look for my support someplace else. I'm going to go to you. Awesome. But don't neglect the fact that there's times you will need somebody. And you want to be somebody for somebody like the day when you need them. You see? Be a support for someone, and that support will be there as well. Let's move on a little further in this verse here. It says, I press on towards the goal, the prize of the upward call of God. And so there's goals. How many say everybody say goals? goals. I need goals. Boy, it dropped off quick air. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we got to have some goals, right? we got to have some things that are attainable, things that we can set and benchmark our walk and our journey, right? It's a good place to say amen. You know, and we go towards that, okay? Got to have them. There's a goal here involved. There's a purpose, a destiny. There's a journey here that we're on. There's a vision for our life. One of the most powerful principles I got a hold of, 
I'll never forget, Jay and I drove to Naperville. And all the way back, we listened to a complete cassette series on Discovering Your God-Given Destiny by Casey Tree. We passed that series around through the body. It came back with one tape missing, so if you've got it, <laughs> it came back four years later. All of it did. And she took notes, and we drove from Naperville home listening to this man talk about vision and talk about purpose and destiny. Lit me up inside. Awesome. We got to have it. It's a biblical principle of vision. Where there is no vision, my people are perished. They're destroyed. There's no discipline. There's un- lawlessness and unruly things happen. So the vision sets the course. It helps us give us a direction to go. But the downside is I can make that the final destination. The rest of this verse says that all this is found, this upward call, these goals are in Christ Jesus. If somebody asks me and says, can I have some water? And I would say, yeah, there's water in the uh, multipurpose room in the refrigerator. Well, where do you got to go to get the water? You got to go in the refrigerator. Same way with Christ. Everything's found in him. I can't not make the goal the final destination. I can't be consumed by the vision and the goal alone. Now that begins to bring some things in my life that I don't need, such as I get weary because the goal is not being fulfilled. The destiny is not being reached. I want to be a man of God, but I keep missing it and falling it short. It's in him. That's the goal. I don't want this anger. So it's not just about fighting anger. It's about going to that place in him in relationship. Vision will only put so much in you. But in him is the relationship, relationship that fuels what we need to go after the vision. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Because we set some pretty high marks for ourselves sometimes. We set some goals sometimes that are beyond where we're even ready to go to. But we set those things. And if I don't pursue the relationship, I'm always either falling short. I'm either finding a false sense of security or insecurity based on whether I hit the mark or not. And I forget about grace. And I forget about the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I forget about those things because I'm not reaching where I want to get. And we come, become frustrated. We're not fulfilled. Vision, is it a powerful principle? Absolutely. Is it needed? Is it necessary? Absolutely. I wish it was more complicated. I really do. For us logical people, how many are logical reason, reasoning people? How many is honest? Two people. The rest of you just <laughs> flow with the Holy Spirit, right? You all just, man, you all spiritual. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Woo, son. I mean, we just, yeah, we just push the glory up, right? And um, yeah. charismatic two-step. And um, <laughs> Sidetrack. Uh, so, you know, focus. The idea is that we, got, we have to understand that to me, I like to reason. I like to logic. I like to, lo- like to logic. That doesn't sound good. Yeah, I like to do that thing. And that's a mental practice and exercise we develop and we slowly into because we're working the problem and it makes us feel good. You know what I'm talking about? Because if I'm thinking it, I got a chance to reason it out. If that was the key, that I would reason everything out and have all my answers. It ain't happening. I've got some stuff I'm still reasoning, and I'm still going around the same track with the same rabbit, and I haven't shot the thing yet and said, no, I will not reason this any longer. I will walk by faith. Man, sometimes you got to leave the end result up to God. Amen? And that sometimes can be terrifying. That sometimes like, no, I get to reason it. I get to think it. I want to logic and just fix it and put it together and go, there it is. It's like a crossword puzzle, right? You get the answer. Sometimes it's just, you just got to do what God said do. That's hard sometimes, especially the more analytical we are. You know what I mean? There's a fine line between analytical and OCD. It's a fine line. <laughs> You know, I like things in order, right? We like things in order because order is a thing of God, right? Is it not? God likes order, right? But we can get so orderly that we miss the moving and the leading. I don't like that. Let's just, yeah, God, just show it and let's move and let's do. And sometimes it's like, no, I don't get the luxury sometimes of reasoning things out of God. It's just you do it. 
Man. And obedience sets the pace for the rest of your life. Disobedience sets a pace for the rest of your life. There's things you've obeyed last year, last month, that now you're, the benefits are coming because you've obeyed. You understand what I'm talking about? Let's move on. We press on because there's resistance. We press on because there's an enemy out there that doesn't want to see us fulfill our destiny. He's the, probably, he's the biggest to me, the biggest hindrance. The second hindrance is me. You know, some people need to get out of their own way. You know what I'm talking about? You ever talk to people and some of their, and their problems and you think, you're the problem. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't see a problem here except it's you. You know, and sometimes you look in the mirror and you go, I'm the problem. Yes. <laughs> okay? No, it can't be that. It's got to be somebody else. It's got to be your wife or it's got to be your husband. If it wasn't for them, I could be happy, right? <laughs> spiritual crown. Spiritual crown. I love it. But see, sometimes I've had to look in the mirror and say, I am the hindrance to my own success. Oh, when God does that with you, it's like, man. But you know what? That's really the time to embrace that. And run to it because there's so much learning and wisdom that comes from the realization that I'm not all that. He is. I'm not. If you see anything that's worth anything, it's only been because he's done it. When you come to that realization, that's powerful. There's, there's grace that's released into that. When I come to the realization, I'm the one. The old story is that I looked in the mirror and saw the enemy. You've heard that? It's sometimes true. My resistance to God's will is what gets me into trouble. The areas that we've submitted to God are blessed, but the areas I don't submit to Him is the very area I hang on to, is the very area that gets me into trouble. T R O U B L, you know, the song. I get into trouble because I'm hanging on to that thing that I'm not laid to His feet and says, here's the labor, God, here's what you need. My alignment with you. It's that simple. I said this in the first service that an, an airplane takes off in Phoenix. And I've talked to my, my brother-in-law, right? He's a pilot. Yeah. My brother-in-law. And he says, you know, we set a flight plan and we set a destination for that big, you know, jumbo plane, whatever it is. And uh, they set this flight plan. And the plane, when it goes through the air, begins to adjust itself as according to the flight plan. Because of storms, because of winds, because of all the different atmospheric pressurized things that he talks about. I don't understand. But what I do understand is the plane will adjust itself through the air so that it reaches its destination. When we flew from uh, Detroit to Amsterdam, we flew over the curve or the arc of the earth. That's mind-blowing to me. And we hit that spot over there. We launched this plane and it lands where it's supposed to. Because a few degrees off in the beginning of the journey means you miss stuff. A few degrees here is hundreds and hundreds of miles halfway around the world. You see, so the plane has to adjust itself. It has to allow for all that that comes against it to adjust itself. It's called attitude. <laughs> yeah, amazing. God knows about attitudes. He knows about how planes are supposed to fly. And so the plane adjusts its trim so it flies efficiently through the air. I thought, man, that's, that's, God, that's what you do. You realign. You adjust. You shift. Because we can be fully on towards God and slightly off. Nobody can question your passion. Nobody can question the fact that you desire more of God. But we need those times of adjustment. You understand? We need those times of adjustment where God says, no, no, no. And you know what? Attitudes are amazing. They reveal so much about us. Yes, they do. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're trying to correct your child, and the attitude is in the way blocking the correction. Nobody's seen that. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean, you're talking to your child, and inside they got this... I want to slap the snot out of that. No. 
And the guy turned their foot out, and they bounced on one hip. You know what I mean? And then you get the eye roll. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> rolling of the eyes, the rolling of the head, the stomp, the huff, the growl, the stamps. I've got it all. I know them all. Okay? And a child that can do all at one time has got it going on. But that's the way I can be. God's trying to work with me and adjust me, and I'm in lockdown. It's everybody else. It's not me. Really? That's how that works. It's not. So when the attitude gets right, see, then we flow and we go through where God wants us to go. But when the attitude's not good, when it's not healthy inside, it's not good inside, we go into shutdown. We absolutely do. And then it will get hard. Amen? Let me go on just a little further. We'll, the last part of this verse, <clears throat> it says, The upper call of God in Christ Jesus. And this phrase, Christ Jesus, I found at least 34 times in the New Testament, this phrase is used. This speaks to the relationship side of the journey. It's not, just, it's not about accomplishing goals and vision. I mean, I love all that. It's, you know, it's about people, and it's about loving people and helping them come into their purpose and their destiny. What greater thing is there to me and to you guys? That we pull people into what God's called them to be. But it's all found in Christ Jesus. That's the place. That's the destination. That's the fuel to keep doing what we do till we get out of here. There is a day when Jesus is going to come back. And, and praise God, let's, let's, let's endure till the end. Let's go and press on till he gets here. It's worth the journey. It's worth the journey. <clears throat> this, uh, this facility that's, that's here that we've been a part of for all these years, I was standing in the back and I was looking at the metal the metal shell, and I looked around where the, the hay bales probably were where they started this, this church 30 years ago. It's been an honor to be a part of this journey, to see the different buildings and structures. And I don't want to bore you with a lot of stories about where we've come from because it's not about that as, as much as about the people who have come through here, the lives that have been touched, the lives that have just have gone out from here. And we have been privileged an honor to be a part of this journey. Uh, Jane and I, we were, we were so young. <laughs> You're going to see some pictures, okay? That's a different person. That's not, all right. I even wore one shirt to commemorate, so no. <laughs> that, the journey has been phenomenal when you look at it in the scope of things. The different buildings, the different uh, changes that have been made have been phenomenal. Jay and I are so thankful to be a part of this church, to be a part of the pastors we've had, to be a part of the teachers we've had, for Pastor Chad and Don who have uh, provided us a way to, to go do and be great and do whatever God's called us to do, but also a way to, uh, to, to be a part of this family again, if that's not what God's called us to go do. Gracious. You couldn't ask for, for anything better. You know, there comes a time when you've got to live with failure is to live with regret. You can't let fear of failure dictate what you do or don't do. And I would rather try and fail than, than to sit around and regret. You, you, you know what I mean? And when you have that kind of boldness or, or that courage begins to come into you with that mentality, it, it, you go do. You see? And that's, that's so powerful. Billy Graham said something this week. He said, God cannot use discouraged people. Mm. This guy's got some wisdom. God always encouraged before he launched. He talked to his men and women of God and encouraged them. And then he told them to go do something, didn't he? So praise God for this. We're thankful for this opportunity. Um, this journey's been incredible. The journey inside of us has been incredible. God and I know what my journey's been here, what Jane and the kids' journey has been here. It, one of the greatest things I think has been is the fact that you all have allowed me to stand before you. 
and, and, and preach and teach and grow and learn and, and, and fail. I listened to some of the earlier CDs and it's was like, oh my gosh, those people had to listen to that. <laughs> yeah, it's humbling to go listen to yourself, okay? Yeah, yeah. But, but that's, that's, that's where we've been. So we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. There's just no way of putting all the words. And you don't want to start thanking people because you'll miss somebody. So, uh, hey, we love you guys. We appreciate you. Thank you so much.